Perfect. Maddie, welcome to our YouTube channel. Can you introduce yourself to our viewers? Absolutely. My name is Miss Maddie. I am the high school youth minister out here at Holy Trinity Catholic Church in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I actually know Mrs. Tillinghast from Benedictine College. We were neighbors across the hall freshman year. We sure were. And she is just one of the people like who continues to help me strive towards sainthood. So be grateful for this opportunity. So yay thank you so much for joining us all the way from texas uh we're really excited to jump right in to talk about the book of jonah so fun fact our junior year maddie and i took a class together on the prophets it was a really great class uh it was taught by dr swafford who is the husband of sarah swafford for those of you who know sarah uh so maddie before you jump in describing the book of jonah to us uh, can you just tell us first, like, what is a prophet? Basically, a prophet was a person that God uses a vessel to speak to the greater community. So it's kind of like a bridge between God and man, and they use it, um, a human person to be able to do this. Ah, so let's dive right in. Tell us about the book of Jonah. Oh, my goodness. Do you mind if we actually open in prayer? Is that cool? Let's do that. Okay, cool. All right. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come together in your name. We pray for all those who are afflicted by this disease. We pray for all of those who are in quarantine and are getting a little bit restless. But more importantly, Lord, we pray for the peace to do what you ask us, whether it's to stay in quarantine, whether it's to grow more in holiness. We just pray for the obedience to greater, to serve you as you call us closer to you. We ask for all of these things in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so do you, you said um, start talking about Jonah? Yep. My boy. Okay, so this is one of my favorite books in the Bible because of the prophets class that we had with Dr. Swafford. And so I had a friend who once really eloquently explained to me that Jonah was kind of like an angsty kid. <laughs> Basically, God came to him and it started off um, in the very, very beginning. So if you have your uh, Bible, like the very, very beginning of it, um, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And he said, set out for the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Their wickedness has come before me. So Nineveh was a really ratchet town. Like this place was a pagan Gentile city full of a hot mess, nonsense, not a kosher place to be. Now Jonah was supposed to go and tell them, hey, y'all need to knock it off because otherwise you're going to get smite and overthrown, kind of like Sodom and Gomorrah. And we all know that's not a place you want to be. So Jonah having been a prophet and knowing fully well what God was asking him to do was like, oh, you know what? I could go to Nineveh, but I'm going to go to Spain. And that is a huge, like 3,000 mile difference. Like I got it actually, like I printed off here. So you can kind of see um, <laughs> where he kind of went wrong, which we'll get to that at that point. But you can see the big difference between where he was supposed to go and where yeah. he ended up going. Jeez. So he hops in a boat. He heads to Spain because in that time, they thought Tarshish was like the end of the world. And so he was just wanting to get as far away from God as possible. So he hops on the boat and he goes, and then like this giant storm comes and it seems like everyone's kind of like, wait, why is this happening? So they all um, cast lots and they're drawing straws and whatnot. And then they're like, okay, Jonah, we know it's you. You're like the salty one here. So what you gonna do? And he's like, okay, you know what? It is me. I'm a prophet. I know what God's calling me to. And they're all like, oh, wait a minute, you're a prophet? Ooh, this ain't good. So. They're like, you know what? What you gonna do, bud? And he's like, just throw me into the water. That'll probably help it out. <laughs> like, God knows. So they take him and throw him into the ocean. And God at this time has prepared a giant fish. We interpret it as well. Could have just been a giant fish. I like to think it was just a big old fishy. <laughs> Swallows him up. And so now at this point, he's like, ugh, God. And he's chilling in this whale for three days, which we know also can prefigure Christ three days in the tomb. Wow. But He's getting all uh, this big fishy and he comes to realize, okay, I'm done wrong. I should have listened to you, Jesus. And I'm sorry. You know, Jesus, God, the father and saying, I messed up. And so he makes this prayer um, of distress saying, I'm calling to the Lord. And I, he answered me. And if you look into it in Jonah two, in this prayer of his, he's listing so many of the Psalms which goes to show what a good man of faith he was, that he had all these things memorized by heart. And so God's like, okay. And he goes, whoop, 
and they, they use the phrase, he vomited Jonah out of the whale. <laughs> I'm sure God had like, or that Jonah was like, I would have preferred a different way. But at this point, I mean, you don't have a lot of options. <laughs> yeah. Kind of bought yourself into this whale, buddy. But at this point, he gets out of the whale and they say he goes on to dry land. This point, he's still a good like 400 to 500 miles away from Nineveh. So he still has to make that giant trek. But as we start on Jonah um, chapter three, um, it starts saying, it starts off very similar to the very beginning where he says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announced to it the message that I will tell you. He's giving Jonah a second chance to go out and preach this message of repentance. And this time he listens. So he goes out to Nineveh and he's just like, all right. And it takes three days to get all the way through because Nineveh is kind of a big place for them at this time. So he's about a third of the way through and he kind of gets up on his pulpit and goes, okay, dudes, here's the deal. Y'all are being kind of ratchet and you've got like 40 days to repent or God's going to turn this into a ratchet nightmare and y'all don't want that. So you got to repent. And then everyone starts freaking out. The word gets to the king and he starts commanding everyone puts on sackcloths, which are like really, really itchy goat hair um, clothing not comfy man like I would not recommend buying something like that from old navy just not a good time <laughs> but wearing it was a display of the rejection of earthly comfort so they were making amends it doesn't use the phrase repentance in here to my knowledge but that's what they were doing they're making actions of repentance um and so they do it and then 40 days come and go and in verse 10 chapter 3 it says when God saw by their actions how they turned from evil away he repented of the evil he had threatened to do to them, but he did not carry it out. Jonah did not like this. He was so not here for this. It's so entertaining. And he just gets really frustrated. And he's like, God, I knew you were going to do this. Like, why? Because if you have the context, it was that um, he wasn't afraid that he, would, he wouldn't be effective as a prophet. He was afraid that he was going to be very effective. He was afraid they were going to repent because... Um, Nineveh was an Assyrian city and Assyrians were enemies of Judah and um, Israel so he wanted them to fail so that makes more sense when he's like Ugh, so frustrated and God literally asks him are you right to be angry and what does he do he goes out of the city he gets on a hill and he just kind of waits to see in the hope that they still fail like at this point they're doing pretty good and he's like are you thinking kidding me but after this, he gets like all comfy in his little hut, his little tree. And then God smites that. And he's like, what the heck, God? And God's kind of like, really, you're concerned about this little tree, this little shade that I've given you. And yet you're not concerned over all of the people, my people that I have just spared. And then we don't really have any context after that, because the very last thing is we have God responding to Jonah. So you can assume in prayer that Jonah kind of figured it out that he was being selfish, but at that point, we wow. conclude with the book of Jonah. That's crazy. Honestly, there are a couple of big things that stand out to me from that, but one of them is, like you said, Jonah was obviously a really righteous guy. He was really holy. God chose him to do this mission, but he was also selfish and like... I don't know. I just think of myself. I, I like to think that God has chosen me for a big mission, but there's so many times when I'm like, hmm, well, I'd prefer if the people I don't like don't succeed. <laughs> you know, like how often do I see that in my own life? But God probably, <laughs> hopefully gives me a second chance, just like he gives Jonah in the story, you know? So that's really, really something that I took away from this. What are some big takeaways for you, Maddie, in your own personal journey towards Jesus? So I feel like Jonah had three big decisions that he made. And these are the ones that I learned from it were that Jonah gave up at one point. At the very beginning, he quit and set him out. Mm -hmm. And what Christ is calling us to is saying, don't give up. I've got your back. If I'm calling you to it, I'm calling you through it. Like, I'm going to allow you to be enabled to do whatever I have in store for you. And once Jonah got on board, so like, he was able to save so many people. Wow. Now... For my own self, I feel like as someone who's still new in ministry, it's hard when you get discouraged with little things, when programs don't work out the way that you thought or um, a youth group or whatnot. But trusting that they're all learning steps 
um, in the right direction. And then the second thing out of that, because um, I had three, were that he separated himself from others, which is really ironic right now because we're all kind of separate. <laughs> but to that uh, extent, when we're in this isolation, we can self-isolate. Mm -hmm. We can shut ourselves out from people and just say, I don't need to talk to anyone. I can be by myself. Or we can take this time to be intentional, to grow with one another. Um, so like when you had, um, when we had talked about wanting to do this, I was like, you know what, this is going to be so good because it's challenging me to get out of myself, but it's also really good because it allows us to share a greater message of our pal Jonah. Our pal Jonah. Um, and so right now we just need each other. I feel like everyone's getting a little bit bummed out. You're getting a little bit stir crazy at home. So it's just fun to get to see people, whether it's like yeah. on FaceTime, whether it's catching up over text, whether it's spending intentional uh, time with family. Yeah, I honestly highly encourage all of our viewers, if you are starting to feel lonely, pick up your Bible and call a friend and do what me and Maddie just did. Talk about it. Just talk about a passage from scripture. Maddie, I have one more question to you, for you. Uh, but first, I just want to highlight what you said. If God's calling us to something, he's calling us through it. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people who are disappointed about different events and activities that have been canceled because of this crisis, but God has brought us here and he's going to bring us through this time and he's going to pour graces out upon us because of it. So that is one thing that's really been giving me hope throughout this whole situation. So Maddie, what's been giving you hope and bringing you closer to God through this situation? Oh my goodness. I just think the resilience of the church, knowing how many people are coming together and striving to form um, unity in this time of crisis, knowing that like what I gathered from this was that God is the God of all people. Like he wanted to spare the, um, the Ninevites and it's supposed an enemy of Jonah and everyone else, but he loved all and he's caring for all. Yeah. The same way I know he's taking care of everyone in this big old fun mess that we're in. Yeah. That He's providing for the healthcare workers, people who are on the front line. He's providing for priests who are still able to live stream masses, even if they can't have the whole congregation in front of us, like, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so he's just enabling us with opportunities um, to get creative. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Maddie, for being here today. And I can't wait to talk to you more later. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.